Hello dears, Natalie Luck here, and this is episode 13 of Write the Story. Definitely just hit myself in the mouth. Hello dears, Natalie Luck here for episode 13 of Write the Story, where I give you a writing prompt out of this book, and I'm doing it in order, as well as the 10 words that you are to include in that story. The way I normally do this is outline for 10 minutes and then write the story for 20 minutes. Then I come back to y'all, let y'all know the differences between my outline and the story, as well as what my favorite line was and least favorite line was, what I liked about the story, what I struggled with, and just kind of as a whole. Feel free to join me on this journey or just listen in or just get the prompt and go write your own story and not even see this video again. Either way, here's the prompt. Wrapping up a business trip. The words to include are bar, laptop, insect, Germany, baseball, nervous, embark, protest, swing, and sentence. Now, let me tell you how my outlining went. With the outline, I started outlining and I'm sure overall I took over 30 minutes for this whole project, but for the outline, that's where most of my time was spent because I started to outline a specific way and then I went, no. I decided a whole different route, kind of a similar route, but I decided to go a different way with where the story was going. So with my outline, what I ended up outlining, and then I even changed it further, the way I ended up going was I was thinking a guy is on a plane finishing up a business trip and flying back um, to the U.S. just because I'm in the U.S., and he, he's doing a voice memo to his secretary, you assume, to transcribe a few points that he wants to finalize in the contract. And so in that point, he is flying back from Germany. He wants to embark in the digital sector on the contract. Wants to touch on how the timeline for the protest saying that uh, if there is a protest, it must be submitted within three business days from the signature date of the contract. He s accidentally spills his drink on himself and will smell like a bar. The sentence part was that he's sentenced to a tin in this tin can to fly. So he already has this mistrust of planes. He wants to swing the board on baseball season box seats without coming across like a persisting insect. So I always like it when I can get like three of the 10 words in one sentence. It's always fun. Uh, on his laptop, he emailed her the contract. And so these are just verbal notes that he's giving her. And actually, I don't have in my notes here him being nervous, but I kind of convey the nervousness in my outline through his comments about flying in a tin can. The story is actually one of the shortest stories I've written. And I wrote it in the book, but then I also transcribed it with like zero editing, transcribed it onto my computer. The total words I ended up having was 230. If you remember previously, I'm usually hovering like just under 400 words. So doing 230 words is pretty good for me. I will try my best because Interestingly enough, and I normally don't tell y'all about the story that I've written, but since it is all dialogue and zero narrative, I will try my best to change my voice depending on what voice you hear. Here's the story. Cynthia, it's Brian. Please transcribe the following notes to clean up the contract I sent you this morning. My time. Also, I apologize for the background noise. I'm sentenced to this tin can for my flight back from Germany for the next nine hours. The first point is to add the effort for embarking in the digital sector. I'm going to pull my laptop to make sure that I quote the sentence correct. Ah, crap. Now I smell like a bar. I just spilled my drink on myself. Okay, I'll just take the jacket off. That reminds me, please make note to try to swing the board on keeping the season baseball box seats without being a pestering insect. Okay, got my laptop and I'm signing in. Shoot. My email this morning didn't go through. I'll just send it along with this voicemail though when I land. What was that? <clears throat> Folks, please take your seats and buckle your seatbelts. We're experiencing some mild turbulence. 
great. Just what I need. As if flying like sardines isn't enough. Either way, Cynthia, regarding the timeline for protest. Oh God. <sighs> Breathe, Brian. Newton's third law states planes should fly. I don't think we're flying anymore. Mommy, what's happening? I'm scared. I can't die. I have to see my kid. Shibadish. Cynthia, please tell my wife I love. So, um, yeah, that's the story. <laughs> Hopefully I varied my voice enough that you could tell near the end you weren't just hearing Brian's voice. To be clear, the way it, the way it is on the paper or on my computer, the way I had it set up, is that when it's not Brian's voice, it's italicized. And then everything else is Brian's voice. And I have those appropriately in paragraphs and quoted at the end of the final paragraphs. So my outline actually didn't change at all when I did the outline the second time. Just for curiosity's sake, if you want to know where my first outline was going, the first outline was going to have Brian sitting at a bar on his laptop reviewing the contract, trying to merge with another company. He, he had embarked on this whole merger eight months ago and took 12 business trips, one of them was even to Germany, to try to swing the board of directors. Then I was going to cut to him being on the plane and kind of nervous for takeoff. And this is where the sentence to attend box for the next two hours, I said, started playing in. And I, but he left his seatbelt off in protest, which to me also didn't play in a factor with being scared to fly too. Like most people who are scared to fly, they keep the precautions of buckling in and such. I was going to have him where he hopes to be home in time to see his son's baseball game. But as I was writing that, I'm like, why does he hope? Why, what's happening? And then that's when I got the idea of, let's make this kind of a found footage, but voice memo. And I actually toyed with the idea of having, after you get Brian's whole part, then it cuts into Cynthia going, sir, that's when the memo cuts out. And you hear something along the lines of, well, I'm glad we got a copy of the contract from the other company emailed over since it couldn't come with Brian and let's set, set a trust fund or something for his son or something like that. But I felt like it actually ending where it did is better because it makes, it's like when a show or a movie ends and there's no sound in the credits. That's what I feel like the effect was with the teller I love and nothing and I think that might be my favorite line normally I don't do my favorite line first but I think I'm gonna do it this time and I really like that then what do I feel like I could have worked on the even though I have this entire scene played out in my head and I am kind of glad I took on the challenge of having a dialogue only clip here I feel that I I could have done better I almost I, I wonder how I could have put in a narrative because the way I see it is he might be on a plane and I didn't have to describe him sitting in like a tiny chair or anything Most people can gather he's on a plane he's sitting there he's struggling with stuff but I feel like it may there might be something missing because by having zero narrative here, I need to make up for that somewhere else. And I'm wondering if I did. And that's one of these, that's one of those feedbacks if from a beta reader, if you've ever gotten it, where it's like, hey, something's off here and I can't name it. And I wish I could tell you how to help it, but I have no clue. So I could kind of see a beta reader maybe being a little lost with this story. But I do think italicizing the other dialogues because it doesn't, someone, if someone's just listening found footage, they would be able to tell different voices. And I hope the italicize shows different voices as well as italicize new paragraph, quotation mark, verbiage in different voices. I think that that would help. I don't know. I, I feel like I could have done something more. I just don't know what.
with this to get to convey what's happening behind the scenes but at the same time by not completely explaining hey this plane's going down I think the reader gets it by the end I will say what I kind of also like about this story and I didn't even realize it until later but you could almost assume that there was turbulence before even Brian thinks what was that because he spills his drink on himself now he could have spilled his drink on himself because he's trying to find his laptop but maybe moving to get his laptop he spills his drink on himself maybe those events coincided with hitting an air pocket and causing turbulence but he didn't notice it because he was already moving maybe that could be it but I kind of like by having him spill his drink on himself it almost thinks like okay something's happening something's about to come up and even though this is dark I also kind of like that I kept the dark part like off page and it's up to the reader to figure out and imagine what just happened I mean are there survivors are there not the way I have the ending right now does Brian survive or not does the little kid saying mommy I'm scared survive like does anybody survive like it's it's haunting and I really like it for that I I, I feel like I am um exercise my horror bone if or suspense bone whichever one would work better in this scenario <laughs> I've gone dark for sure <laughs> But it just goes to show that even the shortest story can be just as captivating as the longest story. And if anything, I feel like there's no part in this story where I was getting bored because being a short story, something happens quickly. And like the first, and if you look at the structure of it, the first thing that happened was he spilled his drink on himself and it's like, oh, oh you know, and it cut him off. He was like, I want to quote that sentence cor and he was going to say correctly, but it cut him off. And he's like, he spilled a drink on himself. Then he's like, all right, got my laptop. I'm signing on. Wait, what was that? Then the captain comes on. It's like, okay, great. Just what I need. Then he tries to go back into his whole plan. And then you assume that the whole plane is just shaking violently because he's going, oh God. He lets out a puff air, which is the pfft. I actually put P and a whole bunch of F's trying to figure out how to convey that. So I went, Phew. and then he's talking to himself. Breathe, Brian Newton's third law uh, states that this plane should fly. And then he's like, I don't think we're flying anymore. So it's like this battle, internal battle. And I, I, I'm actually kind of glad that I threw that in there because so many times when we're in a situation of being scared, frightened, um, uncertainty, we are trying to comfort ourselves and have this little voice of courage of going, it's okay, it's going to be fine. And then this other voice is counting that going, we're not flying anymore. So I think that that was a really good thing to convey. And I, I like that. All right, sorry. I actually like this story. I'm biased. I did write it. But I, I do recognize that there might be something missing. I just can't quite put my finger on it. And I think if anything, it, it is missing the narrative voice, but that narrative voice was intentional. But how did I compensate for that? And I think I did a little bit when it was like looking for the laptop, not, now I found my laptop, I'm signing in. So it was kind of like a guy that kind of narrates his life a little bit, but I maybe I'm still missing it somewhere. So we'll, We'll see. I'm interested to hear anybody's feedback on this. I hope you enjoyed writing your own story for this. Hope you have any feedback for me. Please chime it in. And as always, have a good day. Have a good week. Have a good month. Have a good year.